we wanted to ask you, what is Wilson's temperature syndrome exactly? Well, a lot of times people will have a low body temperature even though their thyroid blood tests are normal. So they might have a normal TSH and it looks like their thyroid function is fine, but they still have a low temperature, which is the whole point of thyroid uh, physiology is to give you a decent, normal, uh, decent body temperature. But they, they can still have low body temperatures even though their blood tests are normal. Can you tell us what are the kind of symptoms a person with Wilson's temperature syndrome would experience? It's all the same symptoms you'd get if you did have hypothyroidism. It could be weight gain, it could be fluid retention, migraines, headaches, PMS, irritability, um, even insomnia, panic attacks, asthma, uh, itchiness. There's 60, 80 different symptoms you could get. And so how do you diagnose with Wilson's temperature syndrome? Well, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. So you want to make sure there's no other great explanation for their complaints. You might check for uh, if they have anemia or infection or leukemia or liver problems, kidney problems. But if you look and look and a lot of times the doctors, a patient will come in to see a doctor and they'll look for any kind of explanation for these symptoms and they won't find any. And so right before you tell the person, oh, I can't think of one more thing that could explain your symptoms, I, I like to have them take their body temperature. And when they take their temperature, usually we have them take it every three hours, three times a day, starting three hours after they wake up, and they take an average right during the middle of the day. And when they see that their temperature's averaging a degree and a half below normal, that's plenty to explain all of these symptoms because that's the whole purpose of the thyroid system is to generate a normal metabolism or in other words a normal body temperature. So this sounds like a lot of people may be experiencing this. How, how common is it for people to have Wilson's temperature syndrome? It's very common. I look at it as a coping mechanism for stress or fasting or different kinds of problems people go through but mainly with stress these days and whether it's the work or family job or family stress, or surgery or accidents, actually the number one cause is childbirth. So someone's going along fine, they have a baby and, and the temperature drops and then they're never the same. And they keep gaining weight or feeling terrible and, and it's very common. So I would say 30% of the population at least. Wow. Almost everybody, you could just walk down the, the mall like walk down the aisles of a, of a shopping mall or some public place, and you can just tell by looking at people that their temperature's low. So how did you discover this? So I was working with a patient who brought in a book to see me called Hypothyroidism, The Unsuspected Illness, which was written by Broda Barnes. And he focused on the importance of using body temperature as a measure for thyroid physiology, thyroid function. And his recommendation was to use desiccated thyroid or T4-containing medicine. And I tried that, and I got really great results in a lot of my patients, and it was really eye-opening. And n some of these patients, not only did they get a little bit better, they got completely better. And so it was really an eye-opener to me because the blood tests were normal, and yet these people got reincarnated, basically, with, with this uh, thyroid medicine. But some of them didn't get better. And I was thinking, well, does that mean they didn't have a thyroid problem or, does it, or maybe there's some other explanation? I was looking at the pathways of T4 to T3 conversion and I began to wonder, I wonder if some of these people aren't getting better because they're not converting T4 to T3 very well. So I experimented with T3 therapy and I, I tried to adjust the T3 to get their temperature normal. And a couple of things happened that were unexpected. The main thing being is that when I weaned patients off the T3 therapy, not only did there, did there were I, was I able to uh, turn some of these treatment failures into successes, but a lot of times their temperatures remained normal even after I weaned them off the T3, and that was totally unexpected. And so it, it showed that there is a form of reversible hypothyroidism that doesn't show up on a blood test, and that's, that's what I call Wilson's temperature syndrome. If a doctor wants to learn about how to treat Wilson's temperature syndrome, how do they go about doing that? They can come to our annual conference and I, we have that certification training. So they come, it's a one day certification track that they'll learn about that. They'll get a book, uh, the book that I wrote on the, the treatment protocol and they go through the, the classes and at the end of the day there's a, a certification exam and as they pass the exam then they get listed on the restorative medicine website. So are there a lot of patients looking for these doctors and how do they go about finding them? 
Well, once doctors get go through the certification program, they get listed on the ARM website, the Association for the Advancement of Restorative Medicine, and patients can go up on that website. It's called restorativemedicine.org, and they can go up on that website under Find a Practitioner, and they can put in their location and, and find a doctor near them. And so you suspect that there's a lot of patients looking for these doctors? Oh, I know it. Yeah, that's the number one question we have is because this information in the book and the, the uh, uh, has spread from person to person, from person to doctor. Most of the doctors that are treating Wilson's temperature syndrome found out about it from their patients. And then some of them have told their other colleagues and patients tell patients and, and that's the way it spreads organically. And the number one question we get from people that come to our website and find out about it, read the book, how can I find a doctor in my area that can treat me for that? That's the number one question we get. 